Hello everyone. Welcome back. Have you felt bloated and know that you need to eat more fiber, but when you eat more fiber, it makes you feel even more bloated and you just don't even know what to do? Well, today I am going to tell you what types of fiber you can eat that won't bloat you and will help you poop on a regular basis. Because if you're not pooping every day, you're going to feel like poop every day. Welcome back. I'm a lazy naturopath. I'm Dr. Brenna Murphy, and I am here to share the smallest changes that you can make with the biggest impact that will save you time, money, energy, sanity. These are the small things you can do to make healthy, fun, and easy. Because as much as I spend my day working with people in health and trying to be healthy myself, I don't want it to be every moment of my day. Health to me is a way to be free to do the next thing, not the thing I want to focus on. So that's why I'm a lazy naturopath. As Henry Ford said, when you have a tough job to do, find a lazy man to do it because they'll find the easy way. Well, I'm your lazy naturopath to help you find that easy way. Now let's talk about bloating. Bloating is basically farts trapped in your colon waiting to come out. Now the three main causes of bloating, one is traffic jams, i.e. constipation. Two is um, needing to feed the grass, but instead feeding the weeds. And three is feeding the bears. So constipation, something called dysbiosis, meaning an imbalance of good and bad bacteria, and not digesting your food well are the three main causes of bloating. We're gonna focus on that first one, constipation, because like I said, bloat is just a trapped fart. So to not be bloated, one of the things we need to do is get the old stool out of the way so that gas can move through your system. Some gas production is normal. We can make up to a quart of gas a day in a healthy digestive system. But when that gas is trapped, it blows you up like a birthday balloon. But the ways that we deal with constipation are increased fiber, increased water. And fiber both feeds the good and bad bacteria, which makes them breathe out kind of like we do, except they don't have lungs, which produces more gas, which makes you even more bloated. So how do you fix that conundrum? How do you poop more easily, increase fiber so you increase flow, but don't actually increase bloat at the same time? All right, so today I'm gonna to share with you five foods that are high in low bloat fiber. And I'm gonna to talk to you about what low bloat fiber is after I share these five foods with you. But first, let's start on things you can add today or the next time you go to the grocery store to help increase that fiber without dramatically or at all increasing your bloat. Starting with, I bet you can all tell it says pineapple. Sorry, I'm in my own light. <laughs> pineapple. So pineapple has about two grams of fiber per cup. So it's not a super high fiber food, but it's a really good fiber food. Um, and because pineapple's fiber is mostly low bloat, and we're gonna tell you why it's low bloat afterwards, um, this is a great way to bring some good fiber into your body to help increase flow without increasing the gas that goes with it. Now, another benefit of pineapple is it actually helps with the bear problem as well. Remember I said that the three main causes of bloating are traffic, not enough grass, and don't feed the bears? Well, don't feed the bears means making sure your food is digested high enough in your digestive tract so you're not feeding the bacteria downstream. Pineapple naturally has digestive or enzymes that break protein down in it. Have you ever eaten a lot, a lot of fresh pineapple and your mouth starts to hurt? Well, that's because the papain in pineapple is literally digesting the skin off your tongue, which we don't want, but we can take advantage of that digestive potential with pineapple in your digestive tract. Same reason pineapple is a really good marinator for meat and things. So get a pineapple it's on sale at Aldi's this week, eat some with your food, it'll boost your fiber and it'll help you digest that food. So pineapple, two grams of fiber per serving, but also gives you a big digestive enzyme boost. All right, food number two. This is one of the foods I recommend all the time, green beans. Now these are fresh green beans. Oh my God, they're in season right now, it's summer. So this is a great time to get fresh green beans. But my go-to personally, and what I recommend to patients daily, is frozen green beans. They're cheap, they're easy, and while nobody necessarily loves green beans, nobody hates green beans either. They're a pretty innocuous vegetable, and they're a really good source of no bloat or low bloat fiber. Um, now green beans have, let me check my notes, 
2.7 grams of fiber per cup. So where pineapple was two, green beans are 2.7, so 50% more fiber per cup. Um, easy to cook, easy to flavor, and a great way to bring in that no bloat to low bloat fiber into your system. Now, like I said, these are obviously fresh green beans. The benefits of frozen beyond the cheap, easy, always available, keep them in your freezer at the office and nuke them when you want a quick lunch. That freezing process actually helps digest the green bean. So again, in terms of feeding the bears, you know, we want to sometimes pre-digest our food a little bit to help it get through our system easily and help to really get all the nutrients out. So the freezing process, because cells are full of water, and when water freezes, it expands. You remember that from physics class? Um, well, that process pops the cell walls, and in plants, those cell walls are made of cellulose. So while it doesn't actually break down the cellulose, it breaks down some of the cellulose structure that help your body um, process that fiber through your system faster. And cellulose is one of our no bloat fibers. All right, food number three of our five no bloat fiber foods is brown rice. And let me again check my notes for the number. Brown rice brings 3.5 grams of fiber per serving, which is a cup of cooked brown rice. Um, brown rice is brown because it still has the shell around the rice grain, kind of like, you know, wheat bran. The bran is the shell around the wheat. So that shell around the rice grain in brown rice provides extra, extra fiber, and that is an insoluble low bloat or no bloat fiber um, that's going to give you that boost. Um, brown rice does take a little longer to cook than white rice. There's a few um, extra ways you want to cook it. Now I would say, again, if you're super bloaty or you're really sensitive, you actually want to cook this soupy. Now, congee is a way to cook really, really, really soupy rice. It's four cups of water per one cup rice, and you actually cook it to be almost like a liquidy porridge. Um, brown rice is typically two to one or three to one cups of water per rice, but you wouldn't want to do a dry version of brown rice if you're super bloated because, again, we kind of want to take advantage of that easy to digest, pre-digested aspect of cooking to help your system overall. All right, food number three. Now, if you watched my... Um, travel vlog from last, travel vlog, my day trip vlog from last week, you may recognize the two pound sweet potato. Now I got this last week at the DeKalb International Market, but today it is acting as a prop, because I haven't eaten it yet, for our fourth low bloat to no bloat fiber food. Sweet potatoes are a really good source of fiber. There's actually six grams of fiber per cup. So that's actually double a little uh, less than double the amount of fiber in brown rice and three times as much as pineapple. Again, cheap, easy. Let me tell you, my bachelor trip <laughs> trick with sweet potatoes, and I call it a bachelor trick because I, <laughs> I do a lot of kind of bachelor tricks for how I eat. Um, but anytime I turn the oven on, if I have sweet potatoes in the house, I will just throw them in the oven with whatever I'm cooking. And then once I pull out whatever I'm baking, I will turn the oven off and leave the sweet potatoes in there because then they will do a slow roast, um, sometimes overnight, depending on when I remember to pull them out. Um, but they get really nice and soft. They're good cold, they're good rewarmed. Super easy, um, easy thing to eat, easy thing to cook, always inexpensive to buy. They keep really well. And six grams of fiber per cup. That is a heavy hitter um, in the no bloat to low bloat fiber category. All right, that is food number four. You guys ready for the final, fifth and final low bloat to no bloat food? And this one comes in at 15.6 grams of fiber per cup. So that is more than double what our friendly two pound sweet potatoes grams of fiber per cup is, and that is lentils. So I don't know if you can see those really well. And these are red lentils um, because that's what I have. <laughs> but any kind of lentil, is a really good source of fiber. Now lentils are beans, and we know beans are really high in fiber, but the problem with the beans being high in fiber is a lot of times they make you gassy and bloated. Well, lentils are your go-to low bloat bean. They cook really easily, you don't have to soak them, they cook down really easily, and again, you might wanna overcook these a little bit, make them a little bit mushy like a doll um, versus a lentil salad. But that is, a, they're cheap, 
and they're super heavy hitters in the fiber category. There are two types of fiber, bloaty and unbloaty, or to use our scientific terminology, soluble and insoluble. So soluble fiber is fiber that dissolves in water, hence soluble, it's soluble in water. Um, insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water, hence insoluble <laughs> does not dissolve in water. Now, insoluble fiber is our low to no blue fiber because not only can we not digest it, the critters in our gut can't either. And so insoluble fiber passes intact through our entire digestive system. It acts a little bit like an exfoliant, so it can actually scrape the old cells of our digestive tract. So it's kind of like a nice spa to exfoliation for your gut. And it holds water in the stool, so it keeps the stool more hydrated and wet. But in today, what we care about is it also can't be eaten, which means our little bacteria in our system can't breathe out and produce farts that get trapped behind stool and make us bloat. So the five foods we went through today have a decent proportion of insoluble fiber to soluble fiber, therefore our low to no bloat fiber foods. Now soluble fiber is actually really, really good for you. So you really do want to be able to eat soluble fiber because it feeds the good bacteria. It feeds those grass seeds. It feeds those really healthy bacteria that we want to thrive in our digestive tract. And when we feed soluble fiber to our good bacteria, they turn soluble fiber into something called short chain fatty acids. Um, and those short chain fatty acids directly feed the cells that line our digestive tract to help them be healthy and well. So it's kind of a weird analogy, but it's like we feed cows grass cows give us milk, Milk's help our, milk helps our bones be strong. And we'll get into the whole milk, good or bad, another day, but we sort of change our bacteria, like dairy cows, change one thing into something else. And our good bacteria change soluble fiber into fats that feed our good digestive cells. But if you're bloated, you don't want a lot of soluble fiber until you clear that tube, get flow reestablished, and then you increase. All right, so what's the breakdown for what to do if you're bloated? Number one, clear the tube. We've got to get that old stool out of the way. My go-to, of course, is a series of colonics at a good colonic studio. If you're in Columbus, Georgia, come see me at Colonics at Elements. Um, but if you're not in Columbus, Georgia, you know, go online, find a colonics place with good reviews. Colonics are just the fastest, most effective way to get the old stool out of the way without disrupting other, other aspects of your digestive system. Um, as you're getting that old stool gone and getting the system flowing, you wanna slowly ramp up fiber, starting with your low, low bloat to no bloat insolubles like sweet potato, lentils, brown rice, green beans, pineapple, and more, um, and then move into soluble fibers like oat bran, um, asparagus, apples, and increase slowly not only your fiber types, but your fiber intake for the ultimate goal of 30, 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. But you wanna start slow, you wanna increase slowly, and you wanna start with your lower bloat fibers until things are moving well, until you have that flow reestablished, so you can go into the soluble, really, really good fertilizer fibers that your body's just not ready for when you're constipated and full of farts, i.e. bloated. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Um, follow me on Instagram and watch me make some recipes from these low bloat foods. And tell me in the comments below, what is your favorite recipe? What is your favorite dish with any of the things we talked about today? I will be back next week with your next strategy for how to be healthy, how to feel great every day without having to spend your whole day thinking about feeling great every day. All right, that's, I'm Dr. Murphy, I'm Lazy Naturopath, and I'll see you next Wednesday.